Our NFL darling, David Nixon, former linebacker at BYU as well, now on the Desert at First Credit Union Hotline. David, just explain to us what the atmosphere was like in the playoff matchup between the Saints and Vikings yesterday as you watched Taysom Hill play. It was uh, it was unbelievable. Honestly, that's uh, it's actually my first playoff game I've ever been to. Um, you know, obviously played in quite a few games, but as as a player, I never made it to the playoffs. But uh, to to go to the playoffs, it was the environment was insane. It was awesome. Uh, it, but from the start, the Saints struggled getting anything going, and so it just kind of fell flat. And the, I think a lot of the energy was sucked out of the stadium. But once Taysom made that you know long run, uh, and then the very next play through the bomb the place just lit right back up and so it was um it was fun it was, it was a fun game to be at obviously with what he did um it was fun to witness it and, and kind of be a part of it describe to us what it's like to be in there and how the fans receive Taysom Hill when he comes on the field and when he's not on the field well it's funny because I, I think I came on here back in August and we talked about after one of the preseason games how I saw two guys wearing Taysom Hill jerseys at the uh, preseason game in in, in uh, LA against the Chargers well, fast forward to this playoff game, you're walking around the stadium and, and a ton, I'm talking a ton of people are wearing number seven Taysom Hill jerseys. And it just makes us all laugh as a family because, you know, and especially as BYU fans seeing what he went through and going undrafted to Green Bay, getting cut, getting picked up and knowing, you know, he mostly a special teams guy his rookie year, inactive for a lot of games, uh, to all of a sudden being this household name there in, in New Orleans and being kind of the media darling down there. And so, it's just been a crazy, uh, just kind of a crazy time how it's all come about. I mean, uh, I was sitting there on the side of my family yesterday, pregame, we were down the field, and uh, Taysom came out, you know, at the tunnel for pregame warm-ups, and even the crowd went crazy then. And I kind of looked at my sister, and we both just laughed on uh, about how this whole journey has been just uh, just a crazy ride and, and how it's come about. But um, it was fun. There was a kid in front of us that didn't know we were his family wearing a Taysom Hill jersey. The guy behind us kept yelling for Sean Payton to put in Taysom. <laughs> <laughs> family and so uh, the, the whole place was going nuts and it was it was fun to see him uh, just I mean when he comes in he provides that spark and and it was it was interesting because at the hotel uh, we were staying at Maurice Jones drew uh, the NFL all pro bowler running back was uh, there staying as well and I ran to him in the in the weight room and we were chatting and nice uh, weight room I, drop by the way yeah you know get me get my fitness on and uh <laughs> And we started chatting about Taysom. I told him I was my, my brother-in-law, et cetera, and he goes, uh, you know, watching the film, it's crazy, and talking to the coaches, uh, specifically the Vikings coaches, because he was doing a pregame show for, for Fox. Um, he goes, you know, they, don't, they, they mentioned how they can account for everybody on the field. They know how to stop everybody, but Taysom's the one guy they just don't have a game plan for because they don't know where he's going to line up, and they don't know what Peyton's going to do with him that particular week. And so it's pretty interesting hearing from, from him saying how coaches just struggle trying to game plan for him, which, which is a huge weapon for an offense like, a, like the Saints and for Sean Payton to be able to utilize him in a whole different roles, a whole bunch of different roles in different areas on the field and uh, try to use him as that weapon. And, and sure enough, we saw yesterday with him uh, throwing the deep bomb, rushing, and then, of course, catching the touchdown. He's all over the place. David, we've been discussing what options for Taysom are out there, whether there is a purely quarterbacking situation for him because you would imagine his stock is as high as ever for other NFL teams or is the best fit for him to continue to along with Sean Payton and Drew Brees and bide his time and maybe he gets a quarterback only shot in New Orleans or maybe he's at his pinnacle as the utility player. What does the future of football hold for Taysom Hill? Listen, we talked a little bit about it this weekend while we were down there, and I, I don't even think he quite knows. I, obviously, uh, he's doing what he's been asked to do with Sean Payton and his offense. He wants to be a quarterback first. He loves the role he's playing and, and like, likes to be a flash player, but he's always wanted to be an NFL quarterback and particularly a starting quarterback. Um, and so he knows his time is probably coming, but – it's a huge question, exactly. So, so who comes in? Uh, he's a restricted free agent, so the Saints have a chance to match whatever a team brings. Um, and so, what's going to happen? Is the team going to want to step in and use him as a quarterback? Is, is the team going to want to come in and use him as that utility player? I mean, there's just so many unknowns, and it's so early. Uh, you know, I, I think the whole team was pretty shocked yesterday. They lost. You know, and, the, and after the game, you, we hang out with the family members, and you can just see it in all the players' faces. It's just. Uh, I think this is a game they thought they definitely should win and then head up to, to Green Bay, but um, wasn't the case. And so I, I think for them, it's just kind of trying to wrap their heads around the season being over, and they'll get to it to here pretty soon. But, um, yeah, I, I'm with you guys. 
and I think Taysom as well. He's kind of up in the air. Of, you know, where is he going to be, and 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 kind of what offers are going to come his way. I know he loves New Orleans. He loves his teammates. Um, he even got a little emotional about you know with with Drew and and uh, the deep, Michael Thomas and the defensive leaders as well. I think he's really uh, grown to. Um, you know, really enjoy being around those guys and learn a lot from Drew and, and from all the quarterback meetings, et cetera, they have. But I think that's kind of the most intriguing part about this offseason is, okay, where is he going to be next year? And is it going to be New Orleans or is some other team going to come along and offer him a big-time gig? So uh, we, we shall see. And help help uh, us understand this. I did a little bit of research. I don't know a ton about the nuances of this, but he's a restricted free agent. So basically there are different tender options, blah, blah, blah. The Saints can match what another team offers him, correct? Yeah, the long and the short is that if a team comes in and offers him a certain amount, the Saints can match it or they can let him walk. Um, and, and at that point, Taysom still has the opportunity to turn down that offer and come back to the Saints for less money if he wanted to. Um, and like I said, a lot of it depends on him as a player. I mean, maybe he takes a shorter-term deal to continue to show his, his value uh, to the Saints and to the market if he doesn't get the offer he wants. Um, and so there's just a lot of options on the table. The restricted tag limits you a little bit because at the end of the day, the Saints still hold his rights. He's not, he's a, he's not a complete free agent, uh, but it's a good situation to be in, especially, like you said, com- coming off this game, you literally couldn't have a better last game to end the season on to head into free agency. David, I want to ask you about two NFL guys or future NFL guys that are coming out of BYU that have postponed NFL consideration for now. Tight end Matt Bushman and defensive lineman Kyrus Tonga. What do you think of their decision to forego the NFL for now and come back and play their respective senior seasons at BYU? No, it was big time. And, and, and listen, for a guy like Matt Bushman, a return missionary, I understood his reasoning for wanting to go. Uh, and Kyrus Tongue, I believe, served mission as well, correct? Yes. Uh, so both of them a little older. I, at BYU, I don't blame guys that want to go early because in the NFL, scouts and GMs look at you and you have a clock on your, uh, t- on your body, right? You have a time clock. And for every year that you get older, your value decreases. And so for, for BYU guys, if you want to leave early, Austin Collie left early i i don't i don't blame you at all because uh you know every year you wait i think your the, the value and maybe your your the round you get drafted in decreases significantly and so um i didn't i wasn't going to blame him i was excited for him but the fact that he came back made me more excited obviously the byu fan and i i told bushman after the san diego state game we're on the field i i told him listen i would trade two or three years in nfl for one year at byu uh because it's an experience that wow. Uh, at, at BYU, it's an experience that uh, you can't get anywhere else. And once you get to the NFL, you realize it's a strict business. I mean, it, it's strictly business. Every year, the team changes because of free agents, whatever it may be. And guys, a lot of guys are out there kind of playing for themselves to get their contracts, get their money. Whereas at BYU, you're playing for this common goal, this common mission to represent the university, you represent your families, et cetera. Um, and so it's just a whole different vibe. Um, and yeah, the money's great, but you can go make money doing anything else as well. Uh, and so if, for me, it's stay at BYU. The NFL will always be there. Um, hopefully your body holds up to where you get there. But I think the, both these guys will benefit from one more year. You get Zach Wilson back for Bushman, who's one more year experience, older. He'll have an off season to be able to work on his skills and, and, and hopefully continue to implement schemes to get Bushman involved. And then Kyrus Tonga hopefully continues to get his uh, conditioning in play to where he can be a three-down player versus a two-down player like he is right now um, and become even more dominant. And, and on top of that, I think BYU will continue to develop their, the defensive line and, and uh, defensive ends to hopefully take some double teams off Bushman and allow him to kind of, or excuse me, off Kyrus Tonga, allow him to kind of do his thing. So um, it's, it's only good for BYU, and I think it's only good for those guys who let them continue to develop and hopefully uh, uh, rise their draft stock come next year. David, we look forward to you delivering our Taysom Hill jerseys to us here in Studio B, man. <laughs> Well, that's, I, I was conflicted because I was going to give my little boy some, some Saints jerseys yesterday, but, I mean, who knows if he'll be at the Saints this year, right? I mean, that's the crazy thing. We, we we're not sure where he's going to be, but uh, I know if he had his way, he'd want to stay there in New Orleans. Um, and uh, I'm confident probably they'll work something out there. I think they realize how big of an asset he is to this team and, and how they can use him and utilize him. But um, we shall see. It should be a very, very interesting offseason. Great stuff, Dave. Thanks for the time, man. Thanks, Dave.